This is this happens. We know this happens. Sometimes other countries test the water a bit, make a bit of mischief, see what happens. But when it's the MOD, it becomes particularly troubling, I would suggest. Well, I think this is very serious, whichever way you look at it. Um, we ought to put out a health warning to say that the government has not officially confirmed that the hacking came from China. And we know, uh, you know, the British Library is still shut. I checked on the website before speaking to you a few minutes ago. They're still experiencing difficulties. They've been down, basically, since last October. Wow. And we don't think that was the Chinese. We think that was a, a Russian kind of volunteer group. And also stories coming from uh, Scotland, the Dunfries and Galloway Health Authority, they've had all their data hacked. So we can't be 100% sure that China is doing this. But what we can be sure about are two things. First of all, China is subjecting the United Kingdom to an extremely deep uh, intelligence probing at the moment, whether it's cyber or whether it's through the use of agents. And secondly, mm. our response as a country had been totally lamentable. I mean, as you say, this is the Ministry of Defence, for goodness sake. Yeah. And yes, they, they it's been privatised and it's a private company doing this for the Ministry of Defence, but it is the Ministry of Defence. Yeah. It's outrageous. It is indeed. And, and potentially, I mean, the implications potentially, I'm sure it won't get to this, but are absolutely vast. We had a caller, Bob, just before the news, who was with us, Anthony, and he was making the point that he thinks that the... the potential blame for this lies firmly at the issue of privatising this stuff to out external organisations that really aren't up to the job, as it were. Well, I couldn't agree with the old caller more. Uh, and, we, we, you know, let, let's stick with the security aspect of it. Um, the truth is that the delivery of security is the prime aim of government. Everything else comes second to that. And the idea that we can privatise it, key aspects of how we deliver our security is absolutely mad. Yeah. This privatization uh, mania came at us in a time when we weren't facing the sort of threats that we're facing today. And instead of the government saying, oh, well, you know, that was yesterday and today is today and doing something about it, instead, even though, you know, we've got one of the finest cyber intelligence agencies in the world in Cheltenham uh, down there, uh, they themselves have an outpost in Victoria, London, that, uh, that is also one of the envies of the world. We've got the people, we've got the brains, uh, we've got the technology, but yet we allow private companies to make money out of it. And they're no good at it. When you come to China, uh, as I say, we are uh, subject to an enormous amount of probing by the Chinese. And the question is really, and I think Ian Duncan Smith is one man I agree with on everything I have to add. But he's, he said, look, the British government is refusing actually officially to say it is China, although it's got to say something to all the service people who have to be notified yeah. in a very short space of time that their data has been hacked. Why are we afraid of President Xi of China? Because we jolly well shouldn't be. Yeah, well, he's been breaking bread with Macron, as you know, for the last couple of days and, and looking rather happy with his European... It's, it's interesting that France was the only major uh, EU country that he chose to meet. I think he's meeting Hungary. Um, so the significance of France, I don't know. We can read into that as we will. But when it comes to these uh, fishing expeditions, if they are that, or complete theft of entire databases, do... Whether it's China, whether it's Russia, whoever, do... Is it a case, as I alluded to at the beginning, Anthony, that some some countries will do this just to show that they can, rather than specifically wanting to do something with the information? Well, Ian, I, uh, yeah, some countries will do it just to show that they can. But there is another aspect of this. The very fact that we think they can do it is in itself subversive. In itself, it undermines our national security in itself, it makes us feel less safe than we deserve to be. So even if this doesn't come from China, and even if the, you know this hack is less serious, the fact that you and I are talking about it yeah. shows that China has already scored a win on this. And we cannot treat China as if it were a, a normal trade partner, a, a normal great power. You know, if Xi, I, I hope Macron made this clear to him, he, 
you know, that little French president is actually quite tough. If China wants to be a real partner for us in the West, first and foremost, it has got to stop spying and it has got to stop supporting Putin in his murderous war in Ukraine. Yeah. And when China does those two things, then, yes, we'll start buying Chinese tat again and they can have stuff from us. Indeed. But, of course, their tentacles are spread now across the world. Africa is a place they are almost determined to, you know, I wouldn't say subjugate in, in a physical sense, but in terms of domination, um, Sri Lanka, a, a couple of mates went to Sri Lanka recently and one of them said that you, you go down there and you look at this country that isn't quite what you imagined it might be. You, you know, I think people have this idea that Sri Lanka is going to be wherever you look is going to be poverty like we imagined India was a few years back, still is in some places. Um, and he said it was very progressive, you know, in what one, one that went to Colombo and it was kind of almost neon lights, Vegas star. And he said it's because the Chinese essentially own it. And I, I'm, I'm sure there's truth in that. So they are clearly dominating the place. But why Russia? What is, what is it that the Chinese stand to gain out of Russia? It's got an economy no bigger than that of California. I appreciate that in military terms, it still punches above its weight. Uh, but what's the... Again, bearing in mind the international response to Russia, why would China want to be cozying up to Putin? Well, I think the answer, there's two answers. First of all, what Russia is seeking to do in respect of Ukraine is what China is seeking to do in respect of Taiwan. So they're blood brothers in that sense. They've got similar strategic goals. But in terms of political systems, they are also... Uh, very similar now. I mean, we've seen Putin, you know, just a few hours ago, crown uh, president of Russia for the fifth time behind those gilded doors with those chocolate box soldiers sort of saluting him and, and, and all that kind of thing. Mm. And that's not how Putin started. He started completely different. Yeah. And look at President Xi. Again, he started completely different. It's as if you know, that old adage that all power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. We're seeing it play out, and it takes one to know one. Xi knows Putin. Putin knows Xi. They think their systems live or die together, and, and that is a very deep community of interest. We don't want to be, you know, caught out by either of these jokers.